Welcome to our session um, about Java versus TypeScript. Um, so instead of doing a technical session, because I think you already had more than enough this week, we decided to do this as a fairy tale. So as each fairy tale, we start once upon a time in Codagent, where a young coder gift who found this cool new language TypeScript that you can use to program things in the browser, on the server, and so on. She really loved this language, but one day she got lost in the woods somewhere in the night and found this old magic castle in that a quite curious beast lived that he's never seen before, something like that. But, since both are coders, it took them time, but after a while, they get to know each other better. So welcome to our talk, Beauty and the Beast. I'm Hendrik Ebbers. Um, I'm one of the co-founders co of the company Karakuna G in Switzerland. Um, we're a consulting company. Maybe you've heard about uh, Canu. So this is the successor of, of Canu. We are on the market since last year. Uh, do, yeah, Java specialist consultancy. Um, next to this, I'm leading the uh, Java user group Dortmund. Um, I'm part of some export groups uh, for JSR specification and I'm yeah, doing a lot of talk. So I'm a Java one rockstar, Java champion and since two year, uh, years, weeks, since two weeks, I'm in the technical steering committee of Adopt Open JDK. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, my name is Michael Heinrichs. I'm also one of the co-founders of Karakun. Um, I'm also Java champion, Jack leader of the Java user group Freiburg. Um, yeah, I used to be a developer, a speaker, and an author, but actually a couple of months ago, I switched to the dark side. So now I'm, I'm more of a product manager, product owner. Um, yeah, but I did lots of development. So if you want to hear important technical stuff, listen to me, not to him, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, but before that, I did a lot of development, um, mostly in Java, and I, but I switched to TypeScript, actually, and did lots of TypeScript development. So some people would probably say that I already switched to the dark side years before that. Um, but anyway, so. Actually, I've seen the slide. I, I had no idea what you were talking. And I thought this is because you do TypeScript now and not. <laughs> so we really switched two times to the dark side. But OK. Um, yeah, as I said, we would love to compare Java and TypeScript. So I assume some of you here are maybe Java developers. Who's a Java developer? Hands up. Awesome. Who's a TypeScript developer? Who does both? OK, cool. Already a lot of people. Um, yeah, so since mostly everyone knows Java, we have did some general Java slides. But I think we do not really need to talk about this. This is more for the video and upload of the slides. I assume everyone knows all the bullet points on the slides. Um, but some of you are only know Java and not TypeScript, so maybe Michael uh, wants to say yeah. a little bit. So TypeScript is a relatively new language. Um, it was published in 2012. It's developed by Microsoft, but it's um, open source. So um, yeah, like probably most languages nowadays, it's also open source. Um, and what is actually what it is from a, from a conceptual point of view, it is um, a superset of JavaScript, so it is JavaScript plus some static typing. And it's optional static typing, that means you can um, define the types of all of your variables and parameters, but you don't have to. Um, and then TypeScript is being compiled into JavaScript, so you can use it whenever you can use JavaScript, which means in browsers or on Node mostly nowadays. Okay, and what we would have to do now is to have a look at the language specification of Java and JavaScript and try 
to compare the features against each other, where is the one language better, maybe where's the other one. Um, yeah, and the first that we want to have a look at are primitive data types. Um, so I think anyone can read at least one of those two lines. So here we see how you can define a primitive data type in Java or in TypeScript. In Java, it's you define the type. There are several types that you can use in Java to pr define primitive data types, then the name and the value of the variable. Yeah, in TypeScript, it's actually quite similar. The order changes slightly, and one needs to use the let or the const um, keyword in the beginning. But actually, it's um, very similar, and every Java developer can probably read that and learn um, quickly yeah. how an assignment is done. Even I understood that. <laughs> um, yeah, let's have a look at the different types that you can use to define primitive data. Um, on Java, we have a huge list. So we can define Boolean and a lot of, call it numeric-like values or numbers. Um, like you can, I think most of you know, int, long, double, float. Then you can do, do short and byte that is not so much uh, often used or you define a character. Um, so yeah. it's a large list, especially in the numbers area. You have different choices, uh, several different choices that you can choose from. Yeah, in TypeScript, the list is actually quite short. There's just number, which is uh, good on one side because usually you don't really need the difference between byte, word, and in, for example. But actually, you don't really have an integer type in TypeScript, and that can actually does do her. Uh, that some, sometimes actually does hurt. Um, we have booleans and we have actually strings. So in TypeScript, strings are primitive data types. In Java, they are not. We will see that later. Um, so now here comes the first. TypeScript rent. <laughs> so as Michael already said, in TypeScript you just have number, which means every number that you define is a floating point number. Um, if you define, want to define something like in Java you would do it with an int, uh, with a long, you could get, as you can see, a wrong number in um, TypeScript because this is how it is defined in JavaScript. TypeScript is a superset of uh, JavaScript. And that is, if you come from Java, go there, definitely a problem that you need to know. But I think there are solutions, right? Um, not really. Not really? Oh. No, that's just, you have to get used to it. It's floating points always, and you know, they have certain disadvantages, and that's it. OK. Um, on the other hand, we've seen that uh, TypeScript has string as a primitive data type. In Java, string is already a class. Um, it's a finite class, it's immutable, um, and the language gives you a lot of syntactic sugar to create new strings so that you not all the time you need to do like new string and then an array of characters or something like that. But internally, the string really holds all its data in an array of Character, so in an array of primitive data. Um, arrays and tuples. This is something where TypeScript is much better. Yeah, so in, in Java, we just have arrays and, and uh, all of the other collections. Um, but as a primitive data or as a, a data type in the language, they're just. Um, yeah, you can just use arrays. In um, TypeScript, we have arrays and tuples. The difference is an array is um, a list of elements, and all of them have the same type. Tuples can have different types. So the first element, as you can see, could be a string, and the second a number. Um, yeah, that's the big difference between tuples and arrays. And tuples are usually or have a fixed length, while arrays you know, can grow or not. And I think mostly all Java developers already used libraries or created their own class so that they can work with tuples. Um, there were a lot of discussion in the Java language group if uh, tuples should be added as a native feature for Java. This will not happen, um, but something will come, which is called records. Um, and records will be a new language feature in Java that will 
help you to create, I would say something like small immutable objects and you can easily use those for tuples. So currently Java is not as good as TypeScript but once records are there, they are more powerful than tuples, I would say. Yeah. Well, records are, but yeah. We, we had a discussion about that and both of us have different opinions because I think records are not tuples. It's a different thing, but. But don't forget he's on the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's about primitive. Um, so let's have a look at methods and functions. Here it's really more or less the same. Um, here you can see how a function is defined in TypeScript, how a function is defined in JavaScript. In both we have parameter names, parameter type, return type, name of the function. Um, yeah, it's more or less the same in Java. It's just a different syntax how you can write it. Um, this is for the basic function, but TypeScript has um, for functions some additional features that Java do not have. Yeah, in TypeScript, a function is a first class citizen. That means you can actually define a, a function and assign it to a variable, use it as a parameter. As we can see here, there's a function um, that takes a number and returns a number and actually just calculates the square. It's very similar to the lambda syntax in, uh, in Java. There's something like that in J uh, TypeScript as well. And when you have assigned that to f, you can actually, you can call it, you can, but you can also pass it to other methods and do some interesting things with it. So this is something that Java doesn't have out of the box. Yeah, what Java has as kind of replacement are functional interfaces. So that you can define an interface with just one function and then define an implementation of this interface as, as a lambda <coughs> and then call the lambda or give it as a parameter to, to a method, but in that case, you do not give a function as a parameter to the method, you give an implementation or an instance of this interface to the method. So um, the usage of functions is in TypeScript definitely, and this is, all, I think, already in JavaScript, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is coming from JavaScript, so you have a lot of more functionality. Happily, since Java 8, we have this. This is fine, this is was quite good, but yeah, in TypeScript you have a little bit more. Okay, so those are the really basic stuff like uh, primitive data types, methods. Let's have a look at um, object-oriented programs. What you can do in Java and what you can do in, in TypeScript. And I think this is something where TypeScript is really much, much better than poor Java or plain JavaScript, for example. Um, so let's have a further look at classes. Um, yeah. Yeah, you can, you can take a look at both definitions and you can see that they're very similar. Um, the, the only big difference is actually that there is no um, access modifier in the beginning in TypeScript. Otherwise, it looks pretty much the same. Um, or what, what, but what we can see here is actually a default parameter. That's also a nice feature that TypeScript has that Java doesn't have. So you can say, if you don't specify the distance when you call move, then it should be set to zero. Um, another nice feature that TypeScript that doesn't have, uh, that Java has, doesn't have, but TypeScript does have, are optional parameters. So you can actually define that these, that there are parameters which may or may not be set when you call the method. Um, to be true, the, the access modifier, the public one that is part of the Java class and part of the Java method, you do not need to write it. The problem is that if you do not write it in Java, what is then used as access modifier? Any idea? Right. And in TypeScript, it's public, which at the end, how we code today makes much, much more sense because often you do like public or private, right? And okay, when it's private, you just define it and per default it's public. I think that is really nice. Um, but when talking about the access modifiers, it's yeah, more or less the same. So um, what you have in both languages is public, protected, and private. Um, protected works 
So the public and private works absolutely the same in TypeScript and in Java. Um, protected works a little bit different in TypeScript, I would say even better. Uh, maybe you can say something about that. Yeah, so in TypeScript, we don't have the concept of packages. So in Java, we have a private on top of that, or a little more open is package private, on top of that is protected, and then we have public. Um, so that protected means that all child classes can access um, the field or the, the method that you define, but also all elements which are in the same package. In TypeScript, we don't have that, so protected really means only the child classes can access, or the child instances can access um, the, the member of that class. So it's um, much cleaner. I mean, package private was thought to separate you know, the public interface and the one, the implementation details, but actually, as it turns out, it's not that useful because libraries nowadays are so huge that they have different packages too, and then this whole, per, uh, this whole point, or this whole thing becomes pointless. Plus, it's also not really good protection. You just have to define um, a class that's in the same package, and then you can access everything that's inside. So package private is actually very rarely used um, nowadays. Mostly, it's actually, I think just in unit tests so that you can access things that shouldn't be public, but you need them in unit tests. That's yeah, the yeah. only purpose I see right uh, now. Yeah, I would say even that you wouldn't do any more today since we have Jigsaw and you can really define a public and a private API and the private API is hidden from the outside. So you do not need the package private hack for this one anymore. So TypeScript from our Today's view of coding TypeScript just does it better. How protected is defined. Okay, anyway, um, yeah, next to classes, uh, we have interfaces. It's again more or less the same. Um, one specific thing is uh, how, yeah, field access is handled, right? Or data access. Um, everyone knows getters and setters in Java, right? Um, and as you can see on the left in the TypeScript interface, it looks different. Yeah, in TypeScript we have true properties. Simply yeah. said, yeah, something <laughs> that we are missing in Java forever and we ask for that forever, but it doesn't happen. So uh, in TypeScript we have properties. Yeah. Um, this is something that will become better again with the um, JEP for records because then you don't can work more or less like that. But this is future in Java. Um, okay, let's have a look how you can use classes and, and interfaces to de define your class. Um, here we have two different um, examples. One is how to create objects that are mutable and one is how to create objects that are immutable. Uh, yeah, immutable one, let's have a look at the Java code. We have a private field in it, a name, and then we just write or get the IDE created as all of us do, the setter and the getter. Yeah, in TypeScript you just have to specify the name and the type and that's it. I mean TypeScript properties are much more powerful, you can also define setters and getters, but in probably 99% of the cases you don't need that and then you can just use this um, extremely simple syntax for that. Okay, if, if you never, did TypeScript, now you may ask, hmm, okay, yeah, that's cool. We could do this in Java too, just doing a public string name, but how can you use that one to create immutable data, right? And, um, yeah, you just specify the read-only property in front of that. When you do that, um, you can actually not change the birthday of that person later on. You just specify it when you um, create this kind of object but you cannot um, change it later on. Um, there is a small problem or a conceptual thing that you have to know about it. We'll, we'll see that later when I, uh, when I just um, show that, uh, show a little example. You have to be uh, slightly careful with that. We'll see that in a couple of because minutes. Because you can override a read-only property from the outside. <laughs> we will see. <laughs> okay, yeah, as said, in, in Java it will get better with all this yeah, code that you need to write just to, to create a project like setter, getter, hash code, two string, equal, boop, boop, boop. 
Um, once we have records, it will be much, much easier to create immutable data definitions and objects in Java because you don't need to do that anymore. Yeah, next to classes and interfaces, uh, TypeScript supports abstract classes too. I don't know, is there any difference to, to Java? Um, well, on a very, very um, low level. There are differences, but most of the time they don't really matter. Okay. Um, yeah, and here you see just then a class that extends another class or an abstract class, something like this. So it really looks in both languages the same. What I've never, or what I haven't known before we did this talk that uh, in TypeScript you can even use generics. Um, yeah, really like you do it in Java. So there's more or less no difference between those two interface definitions, right? Um, oh. Reflection. Who's ever did reflection in JavaScript? <laughs> this is something where Java is much better. You have the free reflection API. You can do a lot by using reflection. You can inspect your code at one time, even mutate your code at one time if you want to. Um, yeah, and yeah, you can just access a class get a method out of the class, call it, do, do things like that. Um, in TypeScript, it's a little bit different. Um, yeah, so there is um, um, a standard being defined right now. So there is this uh, reflect object, which has lots of, of methods which you can use for reflection, but it's still in an, in an early state. Actually, I didn't really know about that before we did this talk because I've never used it. Um, so far, I didn't need it, so um, maybe that's also one of the reasons most people don't really feel the need for that. But anyway, uh, reflection is coming in TypeScript, but right now it's really um, just an experimental feature. Yeah, and I think you even need to, to add a flag right to the compiler if you want to use it, something like use uh, experimental reflection right, yeah. or something like that. So you cannot just write this code, you need to to add a flag so that this one is working. But then you have a lot of the reflection functionality that you have in Java. Um, it's more or less the same with annotations. Um, in Java, we have annotations to add metadata to our classes, fields, interfaces, whatever. And this is in combination with, with the compiler or with reflection quite helpful to, yeah, do several things at one time, like uh, dependency injection, like uh, creating SQL statements out of JPA, all this stuff is working with annotations. Um, and this is there in Java since, I don't know, 1.5 or something like that, I think so. So really a lot of years. Um, yeah, in TypeScript it looks a little bit different. Um, yeah, so in TypeScript um, we have decorators. They are pretty new feature. Um, not very heavily used, I would say. The only ones who use it extensively, I think, is Google and Angular. Um, yeah, and there everybody's saying, oh no, you're destroying our nice language and it's becoming more, much more enterprisey now. Um, but yeah, you can do very similar things, but it's certainly not as powerful as yeah. annotations are. In, in general, you can, who's doing Java Enterprise stuff? Some people, so the, the annotations in TypeScript are like interceptors. This is everything that you can do with the annotations. You can annotate a, a method and then, or a class or whatever, and then an interceptor method is, is called around the um, method. Okay, um, that's about object-oriented programming. Let's have a look at functional programming. Okay, so if you want to do functional pro programming, I mean real functional programming, neither Java nor TypeScript are actually a good fit, I would say. If you want to do real functional programming, you should use a functional language like Haskell, Lisp, or, or Elm if you're doing um, uh, UI development. That's also a nice um, um, alterna alternative. Uh, having th said that, what you can actually do very well with both languages is something that I would call a functionalish programming. So it's 
taking some of the good parts of functional programming and use that in your regular um, Java or TypeScript programs. Uh, you need to use the language plus some libraries which were act, uh, developed for that. So what do you mean by functionalish programming? Um, one of the things that's, that is really nice about functional programming is the heavy use of immutable data structures. Uh, immutable data structures have lots of advantages. Um, you can use them easily in, in concurrent code. You don't have to worry about that. Um, it cannot change. There are much uh, less bugs possible because things cannot change somewhere and you have to figure out where the change has, has happened. Um, so they make your, your programs a lot easier. And th that's something that we can use in our uh, regular object-oriented programming uh, programs as well. The other uh, nice feature that really helps to make your programs easier and easier to reason about are pure functions. Pure functions are um, defined by two, um, yeah, two uh, requirements. One is the result of calling a pure function can only depend on the input parameters. So you cannot use any of the uh, available variables, any members, if you're in a, uh, within a class. You cannot use that. You, you know, pure function can only depend on the input parameters. And that makes it very easy to test, for example, such a method, because there's no state you have to worry about when you write your tests, because you, when you write a test, you just have to define the parameters, you call that function, and you check the result, and that's it. That's all you need to do about your test. So it's easier to test and to think about. The other thing is um, that they must not have any side effects. Side effects is anything um, that allows you to look from or to notice from the outside that this method was called. So you cannot have any outputs, for example, you cannot store anything because these are all effects that you can actually watch from the outside. None of them is, uh, of that is allowed to happen in a pure function. And again, that makes reasoning um, about this function a lot easier or ab uh, about this method. Um, so I think these are the two most important things about functional programming or that help you a lot and you can use them in regular Java or TypeScript programs. And I think the, the first one especially is a big problem in Java, right? Because several core functionalities and classes of Java are so old, no one was thinking about functional programming and the positive effect of immutable data that you have. So like, let's have a look at the corrections API. Nobody was thinking to define a correction that is read-only. Even if you get a read-only correction from list of or corrections dot immutable list, you have the add method that then throws an exception, which is mm, not that perfect. Yeah, here you can see how you can define immutable objects. <coughs> um, we have seen that example already, so I think we can yeah. quickly step to the next thing. As we already mentioned, it's not really working that well. Um, what you're defining there is not really an immutable object. Um, Read-only is not the same as immutable. Read-only just means that you cannot change that property or the data structure. Immutable means nobody can change it. It will never change ever. So you can have a read-only um, property that changes somehow underneath. Um, it really just means that you cannot uh, change it yourself. Here we can see uh, an example. So if we define a person, which, um, which was defined in the slide before with an read-only property name, um, which is Müller, and then we call this evil rename method. You can see it up there. It, uh, it actually expects just an um, any type. Any is a signal to the compiler to say, um, don't worry about this type. Just ignore it. I know what I'm doing. You know, uh, you need that very often when you deal with um, old uh, JavaScript, pure JavaScript function. That's when you should use it, if at all. It's really a very risky thing because you pretty much um, take out of all of the control out of the compiler, and you have to deal with these things yourself. If you do that, you can actually change the property of the person, and then in the end, you can see that if you um, print out that name, it actually has changed. So that's important to remember. Read-only is not the same as immutable. If you want to define an immutable object in TypeScript, you have to be sure that it's read-only wherever you use it. And when you pass it to a, to a function, 
you need to make sure that this function doesn't change that property. So that it expects actually a read only or an immutable object as well at that point. Um, that's really important to remember. Um, some people say it's a flaw in JavaScript. I think it's just a difference, the difference between read only and immutable, which hits people here because many people are not really aware of uh, this difference between read only and immutable. The interesting point is that in the evil rename method, if the parameter would not be of type any, but would be in of type person, um, this would directly throw a compiler exception, right? Yeah, if that, yeah, right, exactly. If the parameter would be person, you couldn't write that. So the compiler does pay attention, but you have to give it all the necessary information. Yeah, here we can see how we usually uh, define immutable objects in these two languages. Um, TypeScript is, in my opinion, much more helpful because we have the um, spread operator. What we can see up there is we have a person P1 with a specific name. And then in the second example, we create another person. And these three dots with a P1 means that we want to create an object and copy all of the um, properties from P1 into this new object. So it's kind of a clone of that object, but with a very short and um, easy to understand syntax. And then we override this one property that we actually want to change. And that's how you usually do it if you deal with uh, immutable objects and you want to change single, a single property um, in TypeScript. Yeah, and in JavaScript it definitely works. Uh, in Java. In Java. Sorry. Um, because, I mean, you can say, yeah, wait, both have two lines, right? What's the difference? But in TypeScript, what we see is this curly braces dot dot p1 thing. This is a language feature. So you can just create a new TypeScript class. Okay, you need a person class maybe. But then you put in these two lines of code and it's running. Boom. Um, for Java, if you want to handle immutable objects, create new instances when you change something, uh, what you normally do is instead of just creating a new object, putting everything into the um, constructor, you create some convenience methods that often you use often this pattern like with do do do. So what you need to do here is you need to implement and provide this with name method that takes all the properties of the instance, person one, then creates a new person, put in all the values, but a new name, and then return that one. And if you have more than one property, that is always, or if you want to create a new instance then with maybe two properties that have changed or three, you already at the builder pattern and have a builder class and it's it's not getting better. Um, yeah. Uh, there was, as far as I know at the moment, no real, nothing planned in, in Java to make this easier. I hope once we, rec records are out, this will go into a direction where things like that will become easier. But this will definitely take several Java versions. Correction. Yeah, so in TypeScript, we do have um, read-only collections once again. I mean, they're read-only, the same problems. Um, we, we do have the same problems. They are not immutable, but just read-only. But if you are um, careful in your code and you use that everywhere, it actually works. Um, plus, we also have this spread operator. It also works for arrays. So here, um, the second array actually copies all of the elements of the first array and then adds a fourth um, one to that. And as already mentioned in Java, immutable corrections are a big problem. Um, so in Java, there is no real clean solution for this. Since some versions we have the helpful methods in the corrections class so that you can do something like corrections dot immutable list of and then put in your values or you do just list dot of. Those return immutable corrections but they still implement the list interface where you have, from the outside, the possibility to call add, to call remove, all the things. At runtime, then an exception will be thrown, right? Okay, 
So the, the, in, the internal of the correction cannot be changed, but from the outside you have these interfaces. Um, there are some Java libraries out there um, that provide immutable correction. One example is Vava. We just yeah, use this one here as an example where you then can create an, a vector which is an immutable correction and by doing so you really do not have a chance from the outside to, to change the content, maybe with hardcore reflection but, but not from calling methods, something like that. Yeah, if you want to do pure functions um, in Java or TypeScript, there is actually no help from the compiler. You have to uh, make sure yourself that your functions are pure. Um, there are a bunch of um, libraries that help you. In Java, there's Waver, for example. Java streams also help you, help you to make sure that your collections are not muted by, uh, uh, by accident. And um, RxJava is also a, a nice library that you can use. It's actually more po powerful. It allows you to do more, but you can also um, use it to deal with your um, collections. Um, in TypeScript, there's, for example, Lodash, which is a library of uh, a lot of useful functions. And there you can also use RxJS, certainly, which is for functional reactive programming, but you can limit it and use it for collections only as well. Okay. So I assume the talk would end here. And to be true, it's Java, right? So we don't have refraction in TypeScript, no re annotations. Java will get records in near future, which has much more functionality than, than tuples. Um, so it would be a clear win for Java, but it looks like Michael don't want to have it and he added 10 more slides. No idea what's coming next. <laughs> yeah, so now, um, I listed just a couple of things which I really like about TypeScript and which I miss whenever I have to switch back to Java. Um, so one thing is template strings. Uh, we have now text blocks in Java, which is uh, simply a multi-line string. Um, we have that in TypeScript, but we actually have more. You can see this uh, dollar sign and curly braced name. Um, with that, you can actually uh, calculate an expression and then inject that into the string. Um, I believe this is planned for Java, but I'm actually not sure. Um, it's definitely um, very helpful and useful and makes your code a lot easier. You can use string format in Java, but it's still more of a both and, yeah. uh, and not as easy to read as um, the, the uh, template strings in TypeScript. Whoever did Groovy might might know this, for example, because yeah. it's like that. Um, then we have union types in TypeScript. Uh, what's a union type? Um, you can a union type is a union of different types that have been defined before. For example, here in the first line, we have three types: apple, banana, and strawberry. And then we can define a new type, fruit, with, which is either one of these three types. Um, what, it, what does it feel like to use such a such an type? Um, basically, it has all the properties and all the methods that all of these other types do have in common. Um, you can use this type alias. That means you can actually give it a, a type, a name of its own, but you can also just use it in your code. So for example, in this function down there, you can say it should return a person or an error, depending on what the outcome was. So everybody has probably written such code already, depending on what happens, you either return the, uh, an object or some error. Usually you have a pair in Java and one or, or the other is set. Um, in TypeScript, you can just use a, a union type, you return a person or an error. No Java example, because as I said, I've never seen those slides before. <laughs> no, it's just not in Java. <laughs> Um, also a nice feature in TypeScript, uh, you can use union types not only for classes and, and primitive data types, but you can actually use it for values as well. So for example, here we have greeting, which is either um, a string hello or the string aloha. And then you can see, uh, you, can dis uh, you can assign hello to it, but if you try to assign bonjour to it, uh, the compiler will complain and it doesn't compile. 
which is also very useful um, in, in a lot of instances. Yeah, and probably one of the coolest feature in TypeScript is uh, the strict null check. So you can specify this compiler flag, and when you do that, then you are not allowed to assign null to something which should be something else. I mean, for example, here we have s, which is a string. If you try to assign null to it, the compiler will fail, or it, it will just won't compile. In the second example, the question certainly is, so how do, do I deal with situations where s should be a string or null? Then you have to um, define that explicitly. You can use union types for that, so in the second example, s is string or null, then the second line works, you can assign null to s, but now the third line wouldn't compile anymore, because here the compiler would complain, hey, s can be null, s doesn't have a property length, so this doesn't work. And that makes, that forces you to actually do a null check here. And it's, it's extremely useful, I think I haven't uh, seen any null pointer exceptions um, since I've started to use or the, the equi equivalent, equivalent to a null pointer exception in TypeScript since uh, we use that feature in our projects. Yeah. This is a little bit like uh, in Kotlin, right? Where you have a lot of uh, not nice stuff, things like that too. In Java set, we, we just do not have it. We have some things that we can use, but what we do not have, and that's a big difference, is native support for this. So TypeScript really has this native support to, to handle it. In Java, whoever got a null pointer exception? <laughs> <laughs> In Java, right, uh, it's really a problem. It's getting better with things like optional that you can use um, to, to get rid of null pointer exceptions. Um, there are some other things, so you can use, actually, I don't know the JSR number, this library with all the annotation, non-null, null-able, and so on. But uh, this is still a problem. So um, who's using this, like non-null, null-able annotation methods, things like that? Oh, really, some people, cool. So the problem with this is that was planned to become a standard in Java, that you can put it at fields, at methods, and so on. And then the Java compiler understands it and in compile time really checks it and throws an exception. Um, the JSR that was working on that never finished. It just died. So this one has kind of immediate state. It's no real release. Also someone released some state at Maven Central some years ago, but this is not a real release. And next to this, it's just not part of, of Java and the Java compiler. When you use it, IntelliJ understands it. So IntelliJ can show you that there is a problem. You can use plugins in your Cradle build, for example, that checks it and say, you, say that there's a problem. But the regular Java compiler, for example, by default, do not just handle that. So here, TypeScript is still much better. Um. Yeah, another nice feature is uh, deconstruction. So for example, here we have a person which is an object with two properties, first name and last name. And with this, with the first sentence, you can extract those two uh, properties in one go. Um, you can also rename those properties, as you can see in the second example. And what's really cool about it, it's you can actually nest these kind of, um, um, or the deconstruction um, approach. So in the last example, we have uh, the person also has an address and the address has a property street. And with this one line of code, you can actually extract street and usually you ac actually extract a lot more of these properties in one go. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very nice feature. It makes your uh, code small and concise. Yeah, parts of this are coming to Java, again with records. Because if you have records, you can do something like this. You can switch over something that is a record, maybe a node, something like this. And if it's, for example, an add node that has internally the parameters node left and node right, you can use in a switch expression, for example, I think in an if2, um, um, a deconstructor to get access to the left and right parameters and then reuse them. 
Okay. Um, that's so far about the language features we wanted to show and compare between Java and TypeScript. And yeah, five minutes ago, I would definitely say, ooh, Java is definitely the better one. Now, Michael showed some cool stuff that we do not have in Java. So maybe at the end, both are cool. One is much older, um, but based on new functionality that is going into Java, like we got Lambda several years ago as the next big thing. Uh, now, yesterday or two days ago, we get text blocks. Um, somewhere in the near future, we will get records. So even here, a lot of things happening, and I think both languages are quite good. Both languages are ready for the future, and yet yeah, both just have pros and cons, right? Exactly. So I mean, I certainly do prefer TypeScript. Hendrik prefers Java, obviously, still. Um, but both languages work well. We were both really curious when we did this talk what the outcome would be, but we figured actually, yeah, it's, it's a tie at this point. Uh, TypeScript has some features that Java doesn't have. On the other hand, TypeScript is not as stable. It's not as sophisticated. You don't have a JLS where you can actually look up how it works. It's kind of sometimes you see code and you have no idea why it compiles or why it doesn't compile. That's certainly not something that happens when you do Java. Um, but yeah, that's, that's probably the price that you have to pay if you want to be cutting edge. Yeah. So that was the talk. Uh, we are Michael and Hendrik from Caracoon. We had several other talks, or not the two of us, but our company, several other talks here at the conference. Some are today, tomorrow, some are already happened. We did the vocal machines outside some years ago. So Michael, and, uh, really the both of us created them some years ago. Um, so if you leave the room, just press green, would be nice. And next to this, we have some, some stickers here. For example, the Beauty and the Beast Cup, I don't know what the name is in English, right, from the character Flip, something like that. In Germany, it's Tassimo. I don't know. So if you want stickers, we have some stickers. But first of all, are there any questions? actually happens immediately. No, not that I know of. Okay. No, so I'm not aware of such a feature. Okay. No, I, I don't think that this would work. So TypeScript is very simple at that point. Okay. Another question? Uh, yeah, you can do you can do um, exception handling there as well. It it depends on what you want to do. Um, I mean, I, I prefer functional programming styles, so I actually started to use um, um, things, not not really um, um, the return type or uh, or error, but there are um, yeah approaches which are more yeah. functional in this. I, I even do it in Java often these days. So in, in Viva, you, you have a lot of helpful classes where you can store a result or an error, and this is very helpful if you work with streams, right? Because if you stream over maybe 100 elements, and the second element in a map or filter throws an exception, the whole stream is broken. But if you do it like that, then you can iterate over everything and then filter the errors out or something like that. Any other questions? Okay, then thanks for watching. So several people already grabbed some stickers. Um, yeah, take stickers. If you have questions, come up to us to the stage. That's fine. Thanks. <laughs>